Hello and welcome to a new mini series showing you the processes I go through in preparing for a flight. Many of you have been in touch asking me what steps I go through in the days and hours before I get in the cockpit and this series will take you through those steps. We'll start with how we choose a route and an alternative aerodrome. In the second episode, I'll be showing you how I fill out a plog, a pilot log, and how I calculate those headings and times. Episode three, we'll look at weight and balance and performance. In other words, how to work out how much runway I'm going to need for takeoff and landing. The fourth episode will see me check NOTAMs, airfield plates, and the weather. And then we'll conclude in episode five as I actually fly the route I've been preparing. Now, the first thing I usually do when thinking about going flying is I'll open up my iPad, I'll switch on Sky Demon, and let's say, for example, I want to go to Sherburn in Elmet. So I'll create a route. So we're going Biggin Hill to Sherburn in Elmet. This is a flight that I'm hoping to do next week. Now, when we do that, of course, all it's going to do is create a straight line that goes all the way from Biggin Hill to Sherburn in Elmet. It'll take me through all the danger areas, the parachute drop zones, the military zones, and the controlled airspace. And of course, that's probably a route that I won't be able to fly. So the next thing I do is I start tweaking it. Now, I know that I'm going to need to go east in this instance um, because I'm, I can see that my route wants to take me through the city zone and the best way to get there really is to go east, northeasterly. So I'll just change my route here slightly. I'll go out to Alkin and then Baker, the instrument waypoints. And then I know I'm gonna get up to probably Brookman's Park and I need to avoid this little corner here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Bravo November November, the Bovingdon VOR, as something I can track to. So I'll just head north a little bit there until I'm avoiding the Stapleford zone. And that's going to be my route in like so. Let's go there. So I can track towards Bovingdon. Now, I, sus I know for a fact that Luton would prefer me to go overhead the aerodrome rather than um, flying over the extended centre line here or the approach course. Um, I'm more likely to get a clearance if I go overhead. So I'm going to change the course there. And then I'm going to have another look at the route now and see what I'm going to do. Now I've got a gliding site there, so I'm going to go to the left of that. Also got a danger area there. I'm going to go over Cranfield. Um, let's see where that now takes me. Just having a look here. Now that takes me over a drop zone there. There's a parachute drop zone. So we can't do that because we can't fly over a parachute drop zone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take us left over Northampton then left over Leicester, and now we're into the East Midlands control area, East Midlands CTA. And again, we've got the same problem here where they might let us go that way because they're not as busy as Luton, but they're more likely to give us a clearance if we go overhead. So we'll pop, up, pop overhead at East Midlands, and then head up here northwards, and in theory, I think that will probably take us right there. So there we go. I've got my route now uh, planned on here. I'll obviously play with that for some time. I will um, look at it in more detail. I'll try and optimize it. I will then go to my old fashioned map here. And I will draw that route on my CAA chart exactly as it is on my iPad map. The lines are exactly the same, taking us through Luton there, look, and up towards Northampton. Then I'll flip over the page, 
and as you can see it then goes up through Leicester, East Midlands and up towards Sherburn. So as you can see I've chosen a route that's avoided danger area, restricted zones, parachute drop zones and gliding sites. I also try to avoid areas of intense aerial activity if I can and I'm looking for a route which is going to be as straightforward as, as I can find it really, taking advantage of really good visual reference points, so obvious points along the route, aerodromes are good of course, um, wind farms are good, um, big towns are easy to spot, big motorway junctions are easy to spot, that's from a VFR perspective. Uh, from an IFR perspective I'm looking for things that I can program into my uh, GPS, my uh, GNS430. I'm also looking for backup navigation aids, VORs and NDBs and so on. So that's how I will choose a route. It's, it's a combination of all of, those, all of those things. At the moment I don't know if this is going to be an IFR or a VFR route, but it has been planned such that it could be flown either. Now one thing that I do do uh, on my paper chart is I annotate the chart with certain bits of information which I know are going to be useful to me. For example, right here you can see I've marked some uh, numbers and letters here and they correspond to these two points on the map. Now these two points on the map are where a section of the East Midlands CTA drops to 1500 feet and if I haven't got a clearance to go through it that way I'm going to need to drop below 1500 feet and it's not so easy visually to know precisely when that boundary comes into place. So here I've marked two distances. I've marked the distance from Leicester and the distance from Nottingham. And because those two are going to be waypoints in my GPS, I will be able to see on my GPS exactly how far away I am from both of those waypoints and I can then know how far I am away from the entrance and exit of this section of the low CTA. Also on my map I usually show climb and descent points if I can. Um, to remind me, because you can see here that the map is quite complicated around Luton, I'll have a lot going on, and I just mark here for example C32, that means I'm intending there if I can to climb to altitude 3200 feet and I know I'll be able to do that safely without going into any uh, restricted or controlled airspace. What I've also done on here is that I have drawn an alternative route in the event that I don't get clearance through controlled airspace. It's 50-50 really whether I'm going to be allowed through uh, Luton and East Midlands. Uh, we don't know what the situation is going to be on a day. It's harder for them to let me through if I'm IFR. I may need to go around it. So my route obviously takes me up to Brookman's Park VOR here and then I've got a choice. I can either go through the Luton um, CTR if they will clear me through or I can go up here in this gap of uh, Class G airspace between Luton and Stansted. And I know I can do that quite easily by tracking out on the Brookman's Park VOR and then when I'm at this point here uh, just to the northeast of Stevenage I can make a westerly turn direct to Cranfield. So I know I'll be able to do that really easily and then I'm back on the route that I'd originally planned. So if I've got a route that takes me around a bit of controlled airspace I try to make it as simple and easy as possible so that I can follow that uh, alternative route and then get back on track as soon as I can. Now I know that Sherbin in Elmet is not an aerodrome that has an instrument approach. So when I'm planning this route I'm going to be thinking about whether I'm going to be in IFR or not. And um, what's quite good about uh, this is that Leeds Bradford is just, uh, well, how far away are you? 20 miles? 16 miles to the northwest of Sherburn in Albert. And Leeds Bradford has um, an instrument approach procedure that I know I can follow. When thinking about an alternative, I suppose you're thinking about how far away the alternative is and what your fuel state is likely to be when you uh, get there. Um, but you're also looking at weather phenomenon as well. So for example if you're choosing, if you're flying to an aerodrome on the coast you might want to be thinking about choosing an alternative that isn't on the coast that's much further inland in case you encounter some kind of weather phenomenon such as um, uh, fog rolling in, sea fog rolling in and so on. Um, but Leeds Bradford will probably do us quite well in terms of a primary alternative. Um, Doncaster Sheffield is an alternative as well. Um, 
in terms of other smaller aerodromes, if Sherburne in Elmet is uh, blocked because of something on the runway, I suppose I could go to Leeds East, which is just uh, three miles to the north. So what I'll do um, over the next few days is make sure that I print out all of the instrument approaches to any of those aerodromes, study those to make sure that I'm familiar with them, and print out all the other aerodrome charts for all those other aerodromes. Probably check their websites to make sure that they will accept GA, they will accept me in an emergency. So that's pretty much how I get started planning a route. I would normally do this a couple of days beforehand, start thinking about it, over the course of the then coming days, I will start refining the plan. And then as we get to the, say, the night before, I will have finalised my route um, that I have in my head. And I might even sit on the sofa looking at the map, um, just, just flying through it, thinking about the airspace en route, thinking about the rises and falls of controlled airspace, so that I've got some kind of imprint in my memory of what that route's going to look like when it comes to actually flying it. So that's how we get started on choosing our route and the aerodromes that we might divert to. Coming up in episode two, we'll fill out the plog. This is the pilot log that sits on my kneeboard in the aeroplane, carrying all my headings, distances and times. I'll be releasing a new episode in this mini-series every Saturday. If the next episode has not already been released and you want to watch it now, it's available to my early bird subscribers on PayPal and Patreon. Click here for details.